Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So glad to have you here. Like always, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at my egg incubator. And this is the incubator that I use to foster or to place the eggs in once I have a species that abandons their eggs. Now, this is something that is not very common, but every once in a while, we'll have that one or two different species that will not want to sit and incubate properly. So it is always good to have something like this on hand. It is a very useful tool for any aviary. And the specific incubator that I use is not a very expensive incubator. This is a Janoel 848. And now this is something that I bought off of Amazon or eBay. I can't remember, but I will look for the link and I'll place it in the description box below. It is a very cheap incubator. It cost me probably around, I wanna say it was 40 to $50 and um, it is designed for chicken eggs, but it can be used for finch eggs. And this is what I've been using for a very long time and so far it has worked amazing. It hasn't given me much problems besides the fact that here and there you might end up losing one or two of the eggs because the embryo doesn't develop uh, adequately. And I don't know if it's due to the temperature that sometimes isn't kept properly or the humidity or what it could be from, but this is something that always happens. And not just with this incubator in particular, I've talked to breeders that have very expensive incubators and they seem to have the same problem. Along the way, um, they end up losing one or two eggs. So it seems like this is something that is somewhat natural. So let's take a look a little bit further into this incubator. We'll look at some of the features that it has. Right here, this is the temperature. It'll tell you what the temperature of the internal surface of the incubator is. We have your humidity levels right here so you can read the percentage of your humidity. These are just so you can set a couple of different things. The countdown, which is how many days this incubator has been on. And the, I'm sorry, the countdown is by hours. And then you have the days of how many days the incubator has been running. So. Inside of the incubator, what I'm going to do is I'll show you now before I start to put it together. In here, what we have are a bunch of small slots right here. Now, this is where the water goes. In here, this whole section, you fill it up with water, and this is what helps build the humidity inside the incubator. And one of the ways that you fill it up is through this tiny little hole right here. So you're able to fill that section up when the humidity in the incubator goes down. So what goes over that section right there is this piece of mesh right here. So this is the first part that we have to put in order to set this incubator up. Once we have the mesh in there, we have the second part, which is the egg turner. Now, here's the biggest problem with this incubator. Since this is made for chicken eggs, these turners are very big. So I personally don't like to use this. I like to put the eggs on top of small containers inside of the incubator because inside of this egg turner, once it starts to turn left and right as it rotates, the eggs will smash against the inner side walls. And although the eggs don't break, this does cause damage to the chicks. But for the purpose of showing how this specific incubator works. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here just so you guys have a general idea. All right, so as you can see, once it is inside, this is what it looks like. So you have your bottom grate that separates that, then you have your egg turners right here. This is the little motor that goes connected to the top part of the incubator right here. So we'll go ahead and connect all that now and give it a turn on so you guys can check it out. All right, and that's pretty much it guys. Once you turn it on, it's gonna automatically start letting you know that your temperature is very low. And then this right here is your humidity. So. Here's the problem. When you have these finch eggs and you're incubating them, you want to make sure that the temperature is always at the right levels. The right levels or the levels that I use to hatch these eggs all the time is always going to be 37.5 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't want it to go above this because you can end up killing the eggs because it gets too hot. You don't also want to get too low below that. 
because it can cause damage to the eggs and the embryo doesn't develop properly. So I always keep it at 37.5 degrees Celsius. And then the humidity, I like to keep it from around 50 to 60% for the first 10 days. Once the egg is ready to hatch and we're getting into that 11 and 12th day, I raise the humidity up to 65%. Now you can control the humidity of this incubator based on the amount of water that you add. If you add too much water and you have to get rid of some of that humidity, what you can do is you come up here and you have these small slots. Now all of these pop off and you can take them off the top of the incubator. Once you take one of these off, that humidity will exit the incubator and then you're able to control this number right here. So remember, we always wanna keep this between 50 and 60% for the first 10 days. Once you get to the 11th and 12th and you're ready to hatch, it can go up to 65, maybe even a little bit more because this is what's gonna help the chick break through the eggshell. When we move over to this section right here, as you can see, this is the countdown and it has two hours. So what happens is every single two hours, the rotation inside turns. So every two hours, it turns uh, one full uh, turn to the left, one full turn to the right. And what this does is it helps keep the eggs from, uh, from the embryo attaching to one of the sides of the eggs. Naturally, in the nest, what would happen is that the mama bird would be turning the eggs left and right, making sure that the embryo does not attach to one of the walls too early or too soon so that it can develop properly and heat up all the way around. And that is what this does right here. And this is the amount of days that your incubator has been turned on. So as you can see, if we reset it, you're gonna to start to notice that on the inside right here, these little things right here are gonna to start to turn in a second. And this is, you see? <laughs> As you can see, the little egg turners right there are now starting to turn one way or another, and they turn very slowly. This isn't something that turns quick, so you don't have to worry about them damaging the eggs. But then again, it's one of those things where these containers here at the bottom were made for chicken eggs. They weren't really made for very small finch eggs, so it's hard to create something where they don't toss and turn enough in here and start hitting themselves against the side walls because once it makes that turn and it levels to the side like that, the eggs are gonna roll and they're gonna hit the other side of the wall. Let me go ahead and show you real quick exactly how it is that I keep the finch eggs in here so you have a general idea if you decide not to use these bottom grates. All right, so this is pretty much how I like to keep the eggs inside of the incubator. I grab a small food cup I line it up with a bit of cotton and I put the eggs inside. As you can see, each egg is individually marked with, it. you can either put a name, you can put a letter, you can put whatever you want to mark the eggs with so you remember which species they came from. Now, once you do that, you have to remember that these eggs need to get turned at least two to three times a day. You can't just leave them in the same position, otherwise the embryo will not develop correctly. So every two to three times a day, I grab them, I give them a little turn, that way the embryo does not stick to one of the side walls and we are good to go. And this is the best way that I've found for putting the eggs inside of the incubator since the actual thing that turns left and right is a little bit too big. And like I said before, the eggs can get damaged in there. And I plan on switching up the setup a little bit and adding a different thing to this grate right here so that the eggs will fit in here correctly and they don't smash from side to side hurting themselves. All right, guys, well, this is going to be the end of another video. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on the type of incubator that I have and how I use it. Like always, if you did, remember to hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we will see each other in the next video.